This Sunday, we celebrated Advent 1 in the church calendar. To do that, we offered a parenting pop-up called Bringing Advent Home. I met with a bunch of parents and we talked about ways to make Advent happen inside of your house and not just here at the church on Sunday morning. So I wanted to give you all a brief recap in case you weren't able to be here with us so that you would know a couple of different ways to make Advent happen for your children and for yourselves in your own house. To get started, I wanted to talk about the Advent wreath. We see them everywhere. We have a natural greenery Advent wreath over here. It's looking a little crispy, but you see it's still alive and kicking. And then I also have this Advent wreath, a little bit more child-friendly. It is made with all different kinds of pipe cleaners. My kids had a great time making it, I had a great time making it, and I know that it's not going to die on me. So when you're lighting your advent wreath at home, you want to start with one candle and then move up and include an additional candle every week. When you light your candle, I would recommend that you say, God is with us with your children. It's what we say in Sunday school and in Palmer Hall whenever we light a candle. And the purpose is really just to remind ourselves that God truly is with us. When we're in church, when we're at home, anywhere that we are, God is there. God is with us. You'll notice that this week I've lit one candle. That's because this week is the week for hope. This is the story of the Annunciation, when the angel Gabriel comes to see Mary, and she is so hopeful and so full of promise and fear. Can't have hope without fear. And our kids can understand that, even at a very young age. There are things they're afraid of, and there are things that they're hopeful for, and how they come together is important. Next week, we'll light the candle for joy. This is when we celebrate the visitation, when Mary and Elizabeth see each other, and when their bellies see each other, John the Baptist leaps for joy. He's so excited to be in the presence of Jesus, and they haven't even popped out yet. Then we'll light this pink candle. Pretty easy to remember this one. It's the candle of love. This is probably the candle that we as parents can understand very, very, very sincerely. This is the love of a parent, the love of Mary that she feels for her son, Jesus. It's a love that's unconditional and sacrificial and above all, just pure. Our final candle is the candle for peace. During this week, we talk with the children about the adoration of the shepherds. The first people to find out that Jesus has been born are not the famous paparazzi. They're not incredible people. They're just the lowly shepherds. And the angels come and they say, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth. Another unique Advent wreath is the donut Advent wreath. This is a great midweek reminder for your kids that Advent is still happening. It's happening every single day until Christmas. God is with us. Next, I'd like to talk about your nativity. So, this nativity looks pretty empty right now, save this poor, lonely cow. And this is not how a nativity is really intended to be set up, at least not when you buy it, but I would encourage you to break apart your nativity, to spread it out all over your house. To start with, You'll want one of your children, or maybe you, might want to hide baby Jesus. Just don't forget where you put him. And then you can put Mary and Joseph and a donkey, if you have him, in the kitchen, for example. Or you might want to put them somewhere else. And the shepherds, they need to be off in their field. They haven't found out about Jesus yet. And then the wise men, they don't even show up until January 6th. So they've got a long journey ahead of them. On Sunday, someone pointed out that the stairs usually have 13 risers. So if you start them at the top of the stairs, they can be down to the bottom of the stairs in time for January 6th to arrive after the 12 days of Christmas. All that really matters is that Jesus is not there, Mary and Joseph are not there, 
and we're all just waiting at the manger. This is also just a really great way for your kids to participate with the nativity and interact with it every single day because they're creeping them ever closer. You can also throw out your, well not throw out, but you can get, uh, your make your own manger. So here we have a Chinese takeout box that could be the manger, or this origami boat that I made to be a manger. And if you think about it, the only thing that made Jesus comfortable was the hay that was inside of the manger. And so we can think about how are we preparing our own mangers? How are we preparing ourselves? Well, we can do that by good, doing good deeds or by being kind and thoughtful. So if you see your children doing something particularly thoughtful, like if Wally resists the urge to hit Lydia, which is very thoughtful on his part, I might write that down on this piece of paper and fold up my piece of hay and put it in the manger. Now, Wally has helped prepare for Jesus. Lydia has helped prepare for Jesus. I've also made a countdown chain. So each day, we'll rip off another link. This is something that even the youngest child can enjoy. Who doesn't like to take a piece of paper and rip it apart? One of my favorite advent calendars is actually this Christmas tree advent calendar. It comes <clears throat> from this advent calendar, which we do sell in our bookstore. <laughs> Goodbye, tree! That happens at home, too. And every morning, I'll read one of these little book ornaments to my kids. And then they will perhaps fight over who gets to hang the ornament, or perhaps not. But either way, they've heard a little bit of a story as we've journeyed ever closer to Christmas Day. And each day, more ornaments are added to the tree. And each day, we've heard more and spent more time together. Because really, that's what Advent is for a family. It's an opportunity to carve out sacred space, an opportunity for us to be present and mindful and intentional with our children. Anything that we do that's new or different or even just the same old tradition, going to pick out a Christmas tree, going to see the Nutcracker, being together in front of the fire, those are all specially carved out moments. And that is what preparing for Advent is all about.